friends. Today we're going to learn about two great animals with their amazing special characteristics, characteristics, the jellyfish and the sea turtle. Let's learn about the jellyfish first. The jellyfish's habitat is salt water and they prefer tropical waters, although they are found in oceans all over the world with cooler water temperatures. Their diet is meat, so that makes them carnivores. And the way they catch their prey is they zap it with their tentacles, right? And they take the tentacles and bring the prey up to their mouth, which is on the underside of their body. Okay, here are some amazing special characteristics about the jellyfish. They do not have gills. What, what, what? Yes, they don't have gills. So you ask me, well, how do they breathe underwater? They take the oxygen out of the water through their skin. Yes, friends, no gills. They take the oxygen out of, out of the water through their skin. They're made up of 95% water. Amazing, right? Now, this fact, you can impress your family, your mom, your dad, and your siblings. So I want you to go up to your mom and dad and siblings and say, mother, father, siblings. Did you know that jellyfish are bioluminescent? That means they produce their own body light. That means they, you can see a light, like an actual light coming from their bodies. So when you say that to your parents, mother, father, siblings, they'll say, whoa, aren't you smart? You can go, yes, yes I am. Do it, okay? They have to constantly move. If they don't move, friends, it's not good for them. They have to constantly move. And they're largely transparent. That means invisible. That is good for them because the prey they want to eat is easier to sneak up on. And the predators they want to escape can't see them. To me, the most amazing characteristic is the no gills thing, right? No gills and they take in oxygen through the skin. Amazing! So now let's look at the second animal, the sea turtle. Now the sea turtle likes, likes salt water and warm waters too, but they are found in oceans all over the world. They are omnivores. That means they eat both plants and meat. They eat seaweed, algae, jellyfish, and other small fish. Hey. Sea turtles eat jellyfish. That reminds me of that story we read, Harry and Gary. Remember that story about the two sea turtles swimming along? Harry liked to eat seaweed, kelp, and algae, and Gary liked to eat jellyfish. And one time Gary swallowed what he thought was a jellyfish, but turned out to be a plastic bag, and he almost choked, and Harry had to um, do the Heimlich maneuver on him. Whoa, that book taught us how not to pollute the oceans. And think of our sea life that lives in the oceans, right? So let's look at some special characteristics about sea turtles. They can hold their breath for five hours underwater if they slow their heart rate. What? I can even hold my breath 30 seconds. They can hold their breath five hours? If they are sleeping, they can hold their breath four to seven hours. Amazing. During hibernation, that means they slow their bodies down for long periods of time. In colder waters, they can hold their breath for 10 hours or more. Shazam! Guess what, friends? They can live from 30 to 100 years. And some species live even longer. Can you imagine living over 100 years? I can't. Isn't that fantastic? But I'm saving the best special characteristic for last. This is a characteristic we all want. Sea turtles can know their location anywhere in the world by using the Earth's magnetic fields. They're so good, they can go back to the hatching beach. That means the beach where their mom laid the eggs when they were babies from anywhere in the world. And you're asking, how do they do that? How do they do that? How do they do that? I'm going to tell you how they do that. They used to make negative fields of the earth. Now the fields are invisible fields that surround the earth that protect us from the sun's radiation. Don't ask me how. 
I just read the research and they said they just use magnetic fields as location finders and they can go back to their hatching beaches if they want to or anywhere in the world. I think that's awesome. So that way they don't have to call Google. Google, where do I go? Google, where do I go? Or even call the Uber. I think that's awesome. So let's look at the book we're going to read today. We're going to read Down, Down, Down by Steve Jenkins. It's a journey to the bottom of the sea. It has amazing pictures and great facts about the sea life at the bottom of the ocean floor. Please, friends, have your parents click on those videos. I have great videos about sea turtles and jellyfish. But wait, not now. Let's read Down, Down, Down first by Steve Jenkins. Hi, friends. Today's book is Down, Down, Down by Steve Jenkins, A Journey to the Bottom of the Sea. In this book, we're going to encounter many fascinating animals. This book is based on the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the Pacific Ocean. So let's open this book and dive right in. I'm not going to read every page, and I'm not going to read um, all the words on the page, because it's the, some of the language is too technical. Most life on land is found in a zone only a few hundred feet thick from the tops of trees to just beneath the ground. The ocean, on the other hand, averages two and a half miles in depth. They, they are home to the vast majority of the living things on our planet. I'm sorry, let me move it over so you can see. Uh, the water below us is teeming with life. Sometimes, without warning, the creatures of this hidden world burst into our world. We have a Portuguese man of world and an albatross. Okay, we have a great white shark, a squid, and a dolphin. It's called a spinner dolphin. Let me put it so you can see. This may be, they may be pursuing prey, escaping danger, or sending a message to others in their others of their kind. Whatever the reason, sea creatures sometimes leap from the water into the air. A huge white shark. Um. A huge white shark surging over to grab its prey lands with a splash that could empty a swimming pool. A small sleek squid barely misses us as it shoots by, sleeping back into the water with barely a ripple. Other creatures break the surface as well. Now this page just talks about plankton which is really small creatures that a lot of larger creatures depend on. So if there's a lot of plankton in the sea, you, a lot of, you will see a lot of fish, which will attract larger fish and larger fish and larger fish. Okay, that's basically the, what this page says. Okay, so now we're just below the surface, okay? And, okay, life flourishes here. Large, fast swimming predators and eat smaller fish, herding them together into large swirling balls. Seabirds, some capable of diving in a depth of 220 feet, attack from above. Other animals feed on seaweed or jellyfish. So here we have a bluefin tuna, we have a sailfish, we have mackerel, mola mola, I'm sorry, and a green sea turtle over here. Now, this page talks about filter feeders, kind of like the whale who has the baleen. These, let's read about these feeders. Not all large fish are fast swimming. Let me hold it up so you can see, sorry. Both the whale shark and the world largest fish, the gi gigantic manta ray, are, feed directly on plankton. They strain the tiny plants and animals from the water, passing over their gills. These filter feeders follow the swarms of plankton from the surface to the depths of several hundred feet. Jellyfish and many other smaller animals are also filter feeders, trapping plankton with sticky tentacles and net-like antennae. Okay. Okay, these, this is, these are the compass jellyfish, and these are the girdle of Venus comb jelly. 
They're not jellyfish per se, okay? Jellyfish are, co are common here. Cone jellies, a family of soft-bodied transparent animals distantly related to the jellyfish are also common here. Jellyfish and cone jellies are lack of brain, eyes, and a sense of smell, but they are efficient hunters. Can you imagine not having a brain? Okay. Now this is where the twilight of the ocean. We go down some more. Now at the twilight, there's not enough light for plants to grow. Oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it is completely dark. But so creatures here have adapted with great eyesight. Okay. And so we have the nautilus, the oarfish, and the snipe eel. Now, also, since it's completely dark, remember that word we used with, to describe jellyfish? They were bioluminescent. So animals at this level use bioluminescence to attract prey and to ward off predators. Now, divers who've, who, who have visited the Mariana Trench, they have a special light so they can see these animals. So if they didn't have to use their special light, it's so dark down there that, that it would, they wouldn't really see the animals, they would just see their lights. That's how dark it is in the Mariana Trench. Okay. Okay. Now you might say, "Is it snowing?" This is not snow per se, friends. This, these are. It's going to be kind of gross. Okay. These are scales from fish from up above, um, poo poo from fish from above, and dead plankton, fish scales, and and other bits of you know, naughtiness, okay? But the animals who live at this level need that in order to eat. Okay, so it looks like snow, but it's not snow. Okay, now other dark zone creatures attract prey with growing lures. So remember the angular fish? The angular fish holds the light over its mouth and fish go into the mouth thinking it's a cave. So they use light down here to attract prey, these animals, okay? They, uh, let's read about it, okay? Other dark zone creatures attract prey with glory lures, lures, sorry. The female hairy angler dangles her lure at the end of a stalk protruding from her head. She has a small fish attached to her side. It's the male hairy angular, which has fastened itself to the female with special teeth. Soon his body will fuse to hers. Then he will remain living off the female's body for the rest of his life. So some animals are parasites down here. So they, they, they eat, they attach themselves to an animal and what, whatever the animal eats, they eat, or sometimes they eat the animal. Okay, we have other interesting creatures, okay? Their bodies are, are built to withstand the pressure of the ocean. So we have the loose jaw stop light fish, loose jaw stop light fish, and this fish is called the black swallower. So their bodies are built to withstand the pressure at this depth, okay? As you notice, it's pitch black. And also, there are large animals at the bottom of the ocean who are in constant battle, you know, prey, prey and predator, and also for territories. Okay. At the, at the very bottom, it's not much of anything, friends. Very little life. Okay. And so, do you believe there are volcanoes at the bottom of the ocean too? And heating vents to keep the waters extremely warm. And around those vents, our life can survive. Okay. Okay. How low can we go? Okay. Here at the deep spot, here at the deepest spot in the sea, 
there's all there is almost seven miles of water above our heads this is the challenge deep it's a part of the mariana trench a seafloor canyon in the western pacific ocean humans have visited this place only once in 1960 the united states research vessel reached the seafloor with two scientists okay the descent took five hours but the men stayed on the bottom for only 20 minutes Unmanned probes have explored the Challenger Deep on a few occasions. Even here, life can be found. Shrimp, worms, blackfish, and thousands of other kinds of bacteria live at the bottom. So this is the bottom of the Mariana Trench. And the author also gives us information about some of the creatures found in the Mariana Trench. I tried to make the book short. It has a lot of information, a lot of fascinating pictures. I'm going to add a video, a little one about the Mariana Trench for this book. And that's a great activity to go with this book. Ask your parents to click on the remote learning plan.